Museum archives. We hope you're having a good day. Um, a theme that I think we will discuss today are some of the everyday heroes that Norman Rockwell portrayed in his art. Uh, as you know, Rockwell was um, in some ways the great equalizer. He felt that everyone was just as important as the next person and that everyone's role in life was significant. So we thought it might be fun to um, share some different kinds of everyday heroes who Rockwell portrayed in his work. And I, I might just start with um, this wonderful piece focusing on the school teacher. And um, Rockwell, we believe, was portrayed to create a very complimentary view of a fictional school teacher, Miss Jones. Um, because he was highly influenced by a school teacher in his own life uh, who gave him a lot of encouragement and support. And it's significant here that there is a blackboard in the background because, of course, Miss Julia Smith gave Rockwell the opportunity to express himself on the blackboard when he was in elementary school uh, in New York City. And um, here we see Miss Jones, a fictional teacher, uh, actually receiving lots of love and adoration from her own students who have uh, written in chalk uh, in celebration of her birthday. I'll mention that um, the model in Happy Birthday, Miss Jones, was modeled by Ann Brayman, who was a Norman Rockwell neighbor. And um, there was uh, some mixed emotion uh, from readers who looked at this piece once it was published. Uh, many people saw this expression of joy as uh, a wonderful reflection on the American teacher. Uh, but one writer in particular wrote to ask why she was presented so plainly, or in her words, uh, as such a mousy character. Uh, whatever the reason, uh, this is always been a, a favorite representation of uh, school teachers and their importance to our children. I'll share with you some of the reference photographs that Rockwell took. Um, generally, when having photographs taken, uh, his images were recorded in black and white, and there is a reason for that, which is that Black and white allowed Rockwell to focus on the tonalities of uh, an image, the darks, the lights, and the silhouettes that would be very important in a published artist's work. So here we see uh, that Rockwell has actually gone to a classroom to have an authentic setting. And um, Anne Brayman is uh, seen here most likely being instructed by Rockwell um, outside of the picture frame in how to pose. Uh, Rockwell once said that if there was anything that he would have wanted to do other than be uh, an illustrator, it would have been to be a movie director. And his pictures tell a whole story in one frame. Uh, just to give you a sense of some of the other reference photographs that he took, uh, here is a scene of the classroom with a little girl looking attentive, attentively forward. And on the desk, there are, there's a wonderful range of um, apples and peaches and uh, packages that have been wrapped for Miss Jones uh, for her birthday. So what you can see is that Rockwell is constantly including in his reference photographs and in his drawings, all the kinds of 
details that might help to tell a story. And uh, one thing that we can be sure of is that there is never a detail in a Rockwell painting that is not there for a very good reason. Uh, we have some snippets, as we like to call them, close-ups of some of the students in the room. And it would not have been unusual for Rockwell to go into his local elementary school and ask uh, children to line up and to actually pick out the ones who might be the very best for the role. He would then follow up by contacting their parents and inviting parents to bring their children uh, to his studio where they would be given a Coca-Cola and uh, where they would be uh, paid for their efforts and spend uh, a little time posing for his artwork. One of the very important relationships that Rockwell had throughout his career was with the Boy Scouts of America. And I'm holding here uh, a cover from Boys Life magazine, which was the monthly magazine of the Boy Scouts. Uh, this issue is actually February of 1941, um, but Rockwell would have actually worked on this painting, which is in the Norman Rockwell Museum's collection, uh, about two years earlier. His history with the Boy Scouts began in 1912 when uh, he was invited to do illustrations for the newly established Boys Life magazine at that time. And within six months, the Boy Scouts asked him if he would become the art editor, which he did. He worked as art editor for about five years until 1917, where he would hire illustrators, he would create illustrations himself for Boy's Life magazine and other publications. Um, and uh, I think because of this early um, acknowledgement of his abilities. He was extremely loyal to the Boy Scouts um, as a feature illustrator for more than 50 years. He would generally create uh, the calendar illustration for the Boy Scouts, uh, which would appear each January. And then the image uh, that was featured in the calendar would appear on the February issue of Boy's Life magazine. And that is actually what you're seeing here. Um, the painting actually refers to an event that occurred in 1938, which was um, unfortunately the Great New England Hurricane in which uh, there was tremendous damage in the Northeast. Here we see a Boy Scout um, with great bravery rescuing a little girl and even her cat, uh, which rests on the Boy Scout's shoulders. One of the things you'll notice is that even though the Boy Scout is engaged in a rescue effort in um, very difficult conditions, he is neatly dressed. His hat remains on his head. And um, that was one of the rules of being an illustrator for the Boy Scouts of America. Um, the Scouts had to appear neat, had to appear clean, and um, always well-dressed. Initially, Rockwell had long pants on the Boy Scout, which would have uh, been wet to the knees because he was wading through floodwaters. But the Boy Scouts asked if he could make a change. And the change was to uh, put the Boy Scout into short pants, which would uh, actually look much neater than wet pants uh, if they were wrinkled at the bottom. Although there were often changes that were requested to his Boy Scout images, that was very typical for art that Rockwell did for advertising in any way uh, or for corporations uh, because corporations were very particular about the branding uh, of their um, companies uh, and in this case of the Boy Scouts of America. Here we have uh, what we would call a magazine tear sheet which literally just means that it is a, an actual magazine page that has been removed from the publication. And uh, we were very fortunate several years ago to receive this painting, The Lineman, um, from Verizon. Uh, and it came into the Norman Rockwell Museum's permanent collection. 
Uh, it's a very large scale work that Rockwell created when he was living in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. And um, you'll see here that it was actually an advertisement that was meant to uh, remind people of how heroic and important uh, their line people actually were in keeping things going. And I will read you just a little bit of the message on uh, this page. The advertisement says, he helps to get the message through. Along the highways of speech in every part of the country, thousands of Bell telephone linemen help to keep your telephone service good and make it better. They are on the job to maintain uninterrupted service over millions of miles of wire and cable, repair trouble when it occurs, and try to anticipate it before it occurs. There are the men who push forward the lines of communication to new places and new people, through cities and towns, across deserts and under rivers and over mountaintops. By breaking all construction records since the war, they have played an important part in the constant improvement in telephone service. In the everyday doing of the job, as in the dramatic emergencies of fire and storm, the telephone lineman helps to get the message through. Um, of course, it's important to remember that this uh, artwork was created in 1949, and so the reference to the male worker would have been prevalent at that time. Um, but of course, we see many female workers out on the lines today as well. One thing I'll mention is that, uh, again, to create a sense of the level of detail that Rockwell was willing to go to, he had an actual telephone pole, a shorter one, constructed in his yard. And um, not being exactly sure how to find someone who was authentic, he did what he normally would do. He traveled around town in Arlington, Vermont, and found this gentleman uh, who was a lineman and who Rockwell invited to come and pose. There would have been several corrections to this piece as the publishers examined whether the equipment and stance were absolutely correct. And uh, Rockwell worked all of those details through and it became uh, a wonderful piece that we have in our collection today. During World War II, one of the most significant themes in Rockwell's work was life on the American home front. And of course, after the war was over, there uh, were a number of images that showed soldiers returning home from battle. In the Saturday Evening Post cover published October 13, 1945, we see a young Marine who has returned home uh, to Vermont. Uh, which was where Rockwell was living at the time. And he is seated in Bennett's garage, which was uh, a location not far from where Rockwell lived. And of course, all ears and eyes are on the young man um, from everyone of all ages who are interested in hearing what his experiences were at war. This piece is particularly rich in detail, especially in the background in terms of all of the elements that one might find in a working garage. And you might notice that um, we see that a blue star flag is uh, mounted on the wall, meaning that the owners most likely of this garage had someone uh, who was fighting at war. Red tends to be a very significant color in Norman Rockwell's art because it helps him to call attention to things that are very important and to move our eyes throughout a painting. Here the color red and the pattern in the Japanese rising sun flag being held by the young Marine call our attention to him immediately. And uh, in addition, elements of red both on the wall and on the table here give a sense of an inverted triangle that carry our eye throughout the entire picture. 
In addition, of course, Rockwell uses a really important diagonal element here, and that is the element of the uh, invisible gaze. So each one of these figures is looking directly at the young man, also inspiring us to see him very clearly as well. Thank you so much for joining us in the archives today. It was really a pleasure to have you with us and we look forward to having you back next time to explore another theme. Please stay safe and thank you again for joining us. <laughs>